Christopher Robin. This was a passable movie. It's got some good laughs, and it's heartwarming and fairly faithful to the source material. In a way, it's all I could bring myself to hope for after the Peter Rabbit fiasco last year. However, I cannot help but think the movie fell out of its face on some very critical points. It's a basic find-your-childhood story, with Christopher having grown up with a wife, Evelyn, and a daughter, Madeline, being an overworked manager of a luggage company and not having any time for his family. When the family goes to the old home in the country for a weekend, he stays to work on a major proposal for cost reductions to keep the company from being shut down by the board of directors. In his stress and frustration, Pooh wakes up, presumably because Christopher's daughter, Madeline, showed him one of his old drawings, and walks through the entry door of the woods into London. After realizing he's not mad and that his teddy bear is living and talking, he takes Boo back to the Hundred Acre Woods, which is covered in fog, matching Christopher's stressed out mood. After a small epiphany, clears up his mind, and spends some time playing with the gang. However, he leaves his papers from his briefcase behind. Tigger, Piglet, Eeyore, and Pooh go to return them. They meet Madeline, have a bit of a misadventure in going to return the papers, taking a train to London and then a taxi. Christopher and Evelyn begin searching the town, and after Evelyn realizes that the animals are real, they then find Madeline right outside Christopher's office. They go in, Christopher gives a speech about how giving everyone paid holidays will increase luggage demand, and then goes off with his family. It's adorable and funny at times, and the scenes in the Hundred Acre Woods were just perfect. You really have to feel for Christopher, both in his stress and especially when he tells Pooh how he was in the war. However, there are some serious problems keep the movie from being more than just okay. First and most importantly, the fact is, the boss was right. Not only was Christopher's job on the line, but a lot of people would be out of work if he couldn't figure out a way to save the company. This is important. He could hardly have kept the house, car, and vacation cottage if he was out of work. Work-life balance is important, but they chose to illustrate with a situation where he was clearly making the correct choice in working overtime. Secondly, the solution to the climax was nonsensical. Yes, paid holidays are a good idea. In fact, it would have worked quite well if he had proposed the idea of increasing work efficiency. The idea of doing nothing improving life is a very Pooh-esque idea. However, he states it as a method of increasing demand for luggage. That just doesn't work, as the few increased sales of suitcases would be offset by reduced production or substitute workers. This undermines the whole of the storyline, as the solution was to spout some nonsense and publicly call his boss a woozle. This would be fine if the moral was to stand up for yourself, but it's clearly not. Instead of feeling clever, it felt forced. A good fitting climax would have closed this off much more satisfyingly. Finally, the fact is the animals are real, animate toys. This throws an entire monkey wrench into the story. Winnie the Pooh now officially has magic. Given the English setting, it's likely that the animals are actually fae, and that the Hundred Acre Wood is a particularly nice section of fairyland. Christopher Robin is now in the same universe as Doc McStuffins. I would have preferred if it had kept it more subtle, in a maybe magic, maybe mundane sort of way, with only Christopher and Madeline being able to interact with Pooh and friends. Then we could guess about whether Pooh was real or just voicing Christopher's conscience. If they had made these few changes, I think it could have become an all-time classic. However, it's still a nice flick to watch with your kids. Now, on to interesting trivia. First, Owl and Rabbit are portrayed as real animals, compared to the others who are stuffed and resemble their cartoon counterparts. This is a reference to the fact that these two were imaginary. 
The others are on display at the New York Public Library. But C.R. Milne confirmed that these two were made up in his book, The Enchanted Places. Speaking about Milne, there are some interesting parallels to the real Christopher Robin Milne, whom this movie is decidedly not about. While they both fought in World War II, Milne went on to own a bookstore, rejecting all commercial success and even royalties for their stories. The movie is quite clear that this is about Mr. Robin, distinguishing the two. Finally, for those who have seen my daughter's channel, you'll be happy to note that Teddy accompanied the family to see the movie, and he thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks for listening, y'all.